Hello everyone, welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Typically we do the waivers on Tuesday, but today I moved it back since there is the game later this afternoon. And with that being said, waivers in most leagues have been pushed back till either, you know, tonight, Thursday morning, or Friday morning, just depending on the format that you guys do play on. So I just wanted to wait a little bit on this video, try to get the most information out there as we possibly could before making that. Uh, but with that being said, these are going to be my waiver pickups for the week. I'm going to be talking about quite a few different players, mainly because there's some guys that you could pick up and play this week, and then there's some that you kind of want to stash for your playoff run, especially if you're a team that's already clinched the playoff spot. So we're going to start off with the quarterbacks. These are pretty much the streamer quarterbacks for the week. We got Kirk Cousins once again. He is 34 out of 45, 307 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, 19 yards rushing, 32.18 fantasy points, top five quarterback once again. And honestly, he was actually dropped in leagues last week. And I think that's just because Adam Thielen went on the COVID list. Hopefully he'll be back this week. But Kirk Cousins was able to perform without him. Goes against a very good matchup in Jacksonville this week. So it should be a pretty good game for him once again. His matchups get a little bit more difficult after this week. So he's got Tampa Bay, Chicago, and New Orleans. Three pretty good defenses for the playoff run. So he's not a guy I'm trying to use in the playoffs. But this week he has a very good matchup. Should be very useful. So he's pretty much a $1 or $2 bid type of guy. Just depending on if you need a quarterback, how much money you got left. I'm pretty much going to give you bid dollar amounts instead of percentages at this point. Um, but just know they will vary depending on your team need and the structure of your team. Where your team is going to be given the playoff situation as well. Then we got Baker Mayfield, who I talked about last week as well. 19 out of 29, 258 yards passing. Two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Ran for one yard as well. 22.42 fantasy points. He's owned in 20% of ESP links, 35% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Tennessee this week. Should be a very favorable matchup for him. In the playoffs, he's got Baltimore the Giants and the Jets. So Baltimore matchup's probably not the best, but the Giants and the Jets are actually pretty decent matchups for him. He could be a guy that you could use uh, two weeks out of the playoffs, but, you know, he's probably a guy you're only throwing a dollar or two at at this point in time. Should be a pretty good start once again this week. Then we got Ryan Fitzpatrick, 29 out of 39, 257 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, 10 rushing yards. 23.28 fantasy points, owned in 22% of ESPN leagues, 20% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against the Bengals this week, should be a very good matchup for him once again. And honestly, he his playoff schedule is Kansas City, New England, and Las Vegas. So it's a pretty good schedule if he remains the starter. Uh, whether or not they go back to two remains to be seen, but I think Fitzpatrick gives them the best shot to win and make the playoffs. So they might just roll with them, if, and if they do... He's going to have a very good stretch run, and Devontae Parker should have a lot of value as well, but he's probably owned in most leagues. Uh, but once again, Fitzpatrick, he's probably a guy you throw maybe $2 at, but just know that Tua could come back and they could ride with Tua. I don't think it's a good idea, but I am not the GM or the coach of the team, so I don't make that decision. Then we're going to be talking about actually a lot of running backs. Some of the first couple ones are kind of over 50% like Yahoo leagues but under an ESPN league so we'll talk about each of them real quickly Latavius Murray played on 47% of snaps this week since Taysom Hill has been the quarterback him and Kamara have been pretty 50-50 in terms of snap rate percentage so it's very good for him 19 carries 124 yards two touchdowns I know this game was kind of a blowout and he got a lot of late work as well one target one reception for two yards 25.6 fantasy points so he very good day for him overall owned in 46 percent of espn league 60 percent of yahoo leagues goes against atlanta in week 13 definitely a guy i want to pick up uh, you can probably start him this week as well i know i mentioned last week that if you need somebody to start he wouldn't be the worst one in the world uh, so it should be pretty similar this week if he gets touchdowns he's definitely got a good upside but you know he's probably a guy you're spending you know two to four dollars of fab on if you have Alan Kamara, I would definitely pick him up as well if he's available in your league. Just kind of handcuff policy and some upside as well. Then we had James White playing on 38% of snaps. Five carries, 18 yards, two touchdowns. Only one target, one reception for negative one yards. He had a pretty good day, 14.7 fantasy points. Over 14 fantasy points in PPR both weeks so far. Owned in 48% of ESPN leagues, 62% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against the Chargers this week, so it should be a pretty good matchup for him. Uh, Damian Harris did get most of the work as the running back. Sony Michelle played on one play, so it looks like it's pretty much Harris and White at this point in time. And White should get that passing game work, and Harris should be the early down back. But if he's getting touchdowns, 
Uh, it could be a very good day for him. But, you know, he's a guy you probably want to spend 2 to $5 on, just depending on how much you have left. Uh, he's a guy that could help you down the playoff run, especially in PPR leagues. And they go against the Rams, Miami, and Buffalo. Not the greatest teams against running backs and especially receiving running backs. Then we have Zach Moss, playing on 60% of snaps, 9 carries, 59 yards, 2 targets, 2 receptions, 9 yards, 8.8 .8 fantasy points. Not the greatest day. But he's owned in 48% of ESPN leagues, 64% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against the 49ers in Week 13. Not a good matchup by any means. But he's a guy you want to kind of stash on your bench and has some long-term value. If Singletary would get hurt, he'd have a lot more value. And then if they play a game that's in the snow, they might run the ball a little bit more. He does go against the 49ers, then Steelers, Denver, and New England. Not the greatest schedule in the world. But Denver and New England are kind of beatable on the run. So if one of them games turns into like a snow game or Singletary is out, he could have a very good day. He's definitely somebody that should be rostered on your end of your bench. Then we got Gus Edwards who's playing in the game this afternoon. These are the same stats that I mentioned a week ago, so I'm not going to go over them in detail. But he's owned in 44% of ESPN leagues, 53% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Dallas in Week 13, which would be a great matchup. Sounds like Dobbins and Ingram both could be back from their COVID uh, we'll just have to see if that plays out. Maybe Gus Edwards comes out and balls out versus Pittsburgh, and they're just like, hey, we're going to go with him going forward. It's always a possibility. But he's a guy you just kind of want to stash on your bench, you know, a dollar or two. Uh, but he's probably already owned in a lot of leagues. And next up we got Jordan Wilkins. He played on 35% of snaps this past weekend. He did leave the game a little bit with an injury, but Jonathan Taylor was out in this game, so that helped him out quite a bit. Six carries, 22 yards, four targets, three receptions, 35 yards, 8.7 fantasy points. Owned in 30% of ESPN leagues, 17% of Yahoo leagues. Has a great matchup this weekend against Houston in Week 13. And honestly, if Taylor doesn't play, he's a guy that you could probably start. Uh, it sounds like Taylor's going to be back, though, as he was just a close contact. But just kind of monitor the situation going forward. Wilkins is somebody I wouldn't mind having on the end of my bench in case he gets the run late in the season. I mean, Frank Wright's been known to go with the hot hand. And they go against the Raiders, Houston, and Pittsburgh in the playoffs. So he's got very good matchups, but he's probably a guy you throw a dollar at or so. Just kind of keep on the end of your bench. And then if Taylor were to miss or anything else would to change, he could have a lot of value. Then we got Devontae Booker. Probably going to be the hottest pickup of this week. And he played on 35% of snaps this past weekend. Five carries, six yards, four targets, one reception, negative one yards. Not very good numbers there. I know that. Uh, they were trailing in this game. Not a lot of opportunities there for him. But he's owned in 5% of ESPN leagues, 10% of Yahoo leagues. He's a guy that I've been telling you guys to pick up for at least two weeks now in case Josh Jacobs got hurt. And that ended up happening. Josh Jacobs hurt his ankle now. And he had a knee injury earlier in the year, hip injury, now an ankle. He's just always banged up. So Booker's a guy that you want to have on your team. If uh, Jacobs doesn't play this week, Booker gets the Jets. And it should be a pretty good matchup for him, honestly. But he's a guy, you know, you want to probably spend 5 to $10 on your fab budget. Or if you're in a league and most people's fab budget is uh, spent up, so say the highest person's got $4, then you can just bid $5 and not bid whatever the highest person has. Uh, he's definitely a guy for at least one week that could be very good and maybe more weeks. Just kind of monitoring Jacob's injury situation as we move forward. Then last but not least, we got my buddy Jeff Wilson Jr. Returned uh, from on IR from his high ankle sprain. Him and Raheem Mostert actually came back in the same week. So it kind of sucks for Wilson in that regards. But he played on 35% of snaps, 12 carries, 43 yards. Mostert had 43 yards as well. He got the touchdown though. So that's actually a typo. So Wilson just had the 12 carries. He didn't have any uh, targets or receptions. Uh, but he had 2.3 fantasy points. Not the greatest day overall. He did have a fumble, so that cost him a little bit. But he's owned in 4% of ESPN leagues. 3% of the Alley Leagues goes against a good matchup in Buffalo this week. He's definitely a guy I want to stash on the end of my bench, just in case Mostert would get hurt again. Uh, Coleman could be back, but he's always hurt too. So if he becomes the guy, he's definitely a guy you want on your bench, and he's just a guy I want to stash ahead of time so I don't have to go out on the waivers and try to get him with everybody else, especially going into the playoffs. Then last but not least, we got the key running back handcuffs again. So we got Alexander Madison. Owned in 33% of ESPN leagues, 32% of Yahoo leagues, pretty much the same as last week. Boston Scott owned in 25% of ESPN leagues, 29% of Yahoo leagues, actually dropped a little bit in ESPN. Then Tony Pollard's about the same, 22% in ESPN, 19% in Yahoo. 
Carlos Hyde, 27% and ESPN, 38% in Yahoo. I expect him to be a popular drop this week since Chris Carson is back. But, you know, if you have a space and you want to put him on the end of your bench in case Carson gets hurt again, and Chris Carson has a pretty long injury history, he's definitely worth stashing on the end of your bench. Then we got Benny Snell and Anthony McFarlane Jr., both for the Steelers. Snell is 25% owned in ESPN, 35% in Yahoo. And then McFarlane is 3% in ESPN and 6% Yahoo. This is pretty much just in case James Conner isn't able to play next week. After this afternoon's game, we should have a better idea how they'll split this backfield up. I would expect Snell to get more of the early down work and use McFarlane kind of as the scat back or the third down type of back. Then we'll move over to wide receivers. And number one for me is Michael Pittman Jr. Played on 80% of snaps, saw nine targets, only two receptions for 28 yards. Phillip Rivers did not look good in this game, but they do go against the Texans this week, so it's a very, very good matchup, especially now with Bradley Robry suspended. 4.8 fantasy points is what he had last week. 38% owned in ESPN, 58% in Yahoo. He is a guy I would expect a lot of managers to be frustrated with pretty quickly and just cut. So even if he's not available in your league, just make sure after the waivers run that he didn't get dropped because he has been seeing the targets besides the game against Green Bay, which he had three and a touchdown, but he got nine last week. It's only going to get better. And this matchup versus Houston is like as juicy as it gets. Like I said with Wilkins, they go against the Raiders, Houston, and Pittsburgh. They're all teams that aren't great against wide receivers, especially this year. So he could have a great playoff stretch run. He could be a league winner even. So for me, you just want to bid whatever it takes to get him. Then we got Jacoby Myers once again. You guys already know he's my boy, but he played on 94% of snaps again. Six targets, five receptions for 52 yards. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but Cam only had nine completions and like 84 yards passing. So he had like almost all of it. He saw 33% of the targets in this game. 10.2 10.2 fantasy points. He was dropped a little bit last week. 45% owned in ESPN, 52% in Yahoo. Goes against the Chargers this week. It could be an okay matchup. Uh, depends if they put Chris uh, Chris Harris in the slot against him. I would expect that. So it might not be the one you want to play this week. But he goes against the Rams, Miami, and Buffalo, who sh- all should be decent matchups. That Rams matchup isn't the greatest if they put Ramsey on him, but I don't expect them to. But against Miami and Buffalo, they definitely struggle against slot wide receivers, so Myers could have a good game there. And by the sounds of it, it does not sound like Julian Edelman is coming back anytime soon. I would expect him just to miss the rest of the year at this point in time. But Myers is a guy that you probably, you know, you want to spend 2 to $4 on. Just kind of depends on what you got left and if you need a wide receiver. And he's definitely a guy that's better in PPR. Sammy Watkins is a guy that he could have a great stretch run, honestly. And he's played on 72% of snaps. This was his first game back. Seven targets, four receptions, 38 yards, 7.8 fantasy points. And he's owned in 34% of ESPN leagues, 44% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Denver this week. I think they'll have a lot of coverage on Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey now that Tyreek Hill just had that monster game. So this could be a game where Sammy Watkins really breaks out. And they go against Miami, New Orleans, and Atlanta. Uh, The Miami matchup is probably the most difficult one. New Orleans, I would expect Lattimore to be on Hill. And Atlanta, they haven't been very good against wide receivers this year. So Sammy Watkins is actually a sneaky play down the stretch. You know, he's probably a guy that you only have to spend like two bucks on and he could pay off for sure. Then we got Alan Lazard. And he came back from injury two weeks ago now. Played on 46% of snaps in this game. He get, did get a little banged up in this one as well. Six targets, four receptions, 23 yards, one touchdown. 12.3 fantasy points. 28% owned in ESPN, 39% owned in Yahoo. Goes against the Eagles this week. It's an okay matchup for him, honestly. But what you, we're talking about him is for the stretch run. He goes against uh, Detroit, Carolina, and Tennessee should all should be very good matchups for him. If he asserts himself as that wide receiver too, once again in Green Bay, definitely could have a lot of value down the stretch. Then we got Kiki QT. He's not my favorite player in the world as a Texans fan, but he played on 50% of snaps, saw three targets, two receptions, 17 yards. Uh, I believe he did score on a two-point conversion as well. That's how he got 5.7 fantasy points. Owned in less than 1% of ESPN leagues, 2% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against the Colts this weekend. Not the greatest matchup in the world. But the big news here is Will Fuller is suspended for the rest of the season due to PEDs. So Kiki QT is like the last guy standing pretty much with Randall Cobb on IR. So they just got Cooks and QT. 
So he's going to get some targets. As long as he stays healthy, he could have a little bit of fantasy appeal. Um, definitely a guy worth checking out. He probably a guy you only have to spend like a dollar on to get anyways, but he definitely could pay off in the long run. Then we'll move over to tight end. First off, we got Kyle Rudolph played on 78% of snaps last week. Eight targets, seven receptions, 68 yards, 13.8 fantasy points. Very good day for him overall. Goes against Jacksonville this weekend. Very good matchup. Owned in 14% of ESPN leagues, 15% of Yahoo leagues. And if Adam Thielen and Herb Smith would miss again, he's definitely a guy worth firing up. But if Irv Smith or Adam Thielen come back, he's not a guy I really want to play. But tight end is so hit or miss this year anyways. He definitely could have some value. He's probably a guy I only want to spend like $2 on it if I'm picking him up. Then we got Jordan Reed once again. Played on 43% of snaps. Saw six targets. Only had two receptions for 18 yards though. 3.8 fantasy points. He goes against Buffalo this week. Very good matchup for him. Owned in 15% of ESPN leagues. 25% of Yahoo leagues. Should have a pretty good bounce back week this week. Then last but not least, we got Dalton Schultz. He's one of my favorite guys kind of to pick up down the stretch. He played on 86% of the snaps, 5 targets, 5 receptions, 24 yards, 7.4 fantasy points, owned in 30% of ESPN leagues, 22% of Yahoo leagues. Pretty good chance that he's out there. Goes against Baltimore in Week 13, who could be missing a couple parts. Should be a better game for him. Then in the fantasy playoffs, he goes against Cincinnati, which is a good matchup. San Francisco, that's not a good matchup. You want to find somebody else to play that week. But then the last week he plays against the Eagles. So he has two good matchups in the fantasy playoffs. So I would definitely play him for both those. You can probably play him this week against Baltimore as well. Just find somebody else to play in that 49ers matchup. But if you need a tight end, he's definitely a great guy to have down the stretch. Then last but not least, we got the defenses to consider for week 13. We got Green Bay, who I mentioned last week as well. Owned in 47% of ESPN leagues, 67% of Yahoo leagues. They go against Philadelphia this week. Should be a very good matchup for them. Just... Go out in your league, see if they're picked up. See if somebody by chance drops them because they picked them up last week to play against Chicago and they're like, oh, I'll drop them, pick somebody else up. Uh, Or if they had another defense, maybe they just dropped them anyways. Just keep an eye out on that one. Then the other big one for me is Kansas City, 43% owned in ESPN, 71% Yahoo. Not the greatest chance they're out there in Yahoo, but they do go against Denver this week. Denver's had, obviously, the problems with their quarterback. Sounds like they'll at least have Drew Locke and probably Brett Rippon back this week. Doesn't sound like Driscoll will be back, but that should be their normal quarterback rotation. But it's still a pretty good matchup overall. And then the widely owned one would be the Las Vegas Raiders. Owned in 3% of ESPN leagues, 9% of Yahoo leagues. Go against the Jets this week. And I don't need to say much more about that. It's the Jets. You know what to expect with the Jets offense, and you pretty much have been playing any defense that goes against them this year. But with that being said, these are my waiver wire picks for the week. If you guys have any more questions about waivers at all, feel free to uh, leave a comment or get a hold of me via email at coachcraigsports at gmail.com, on Twitter at Coach Craig Sport. We're on the Coach Craig Sports Facebook page. Like I said, love to hear some questions from you guys. Love to help you guys out, especially as we move into the fantasy playoffs. Just try to help you guys do as well as you can this season. I know it's been a rough season for a lot of us. Overall, injuries, COVID, everything like that. I know I've had, I'm in about seven leagues myself, and there's been about two or three, you know, that I've been very unlucky, especially with injuries, COVID, and just tough luck like that too. So just keep your head up. I'll, it'll all work out for you guys and I know a lot of you guys will do very well I think you guys will have some very good playoff runs if you guys have any questions regarding playoff runs schedules, waivers, drops anything like that please let me know I'm here to help you guys and with that being said if you guys liked and enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please consider doing so it helps build the community that we're trying to build here and that's one for you guys the viewers and if you are new or current subscribers yet to do so, also hit that notification bell. It lets you know every single time I post up a new video. Like I've been saying, I post up about five videos a week. And with that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this video. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed. Hopefully this helped you out uh, for this week and for your playoff run. Uh, but it, like I said, if you guys have any questions at all, please do not hesitate. I'm here to help you guys as much as I can. Uh, but with that being said, have a great rest of your day.